All right, last lesson of chapter nine. I promise this one will be so much shorter than seven, eight. I know the window, oh, that was a doozy. But this one, it's nice. We're just looking for patterns again. It's a nice way to end the unit. All right, so you can use your spe special product patterns to factor polynomials. We had our little special patterns that we used when we were writing it from factored form into our standard form. Now we're doing the opposite here. So take a look at this. When you see this, if I told you to factor this, you'd say, okay, well the leading coefficient's one, but there's no b. So how can you take the factors of c to get the sum of the b if there's not a b, right? What do you do? Well, this can still be written in factored form. Remember that when you saw a plus b, a minus b, you saw, oh, this just means a squared minus b squared, right? So now we're going from here to here instead. So if you see that we're subtracting perfect squares, all we have to do is take the square root of each term and it's going to end up being a plus minus. This doesn't work when there's an addition sign between them, it's only when you're subtracting those. So what's the square root of x squared? What number squared gives me x squared? x, right? So that means my a is x. And what's the square root of 25? What number squared gives me 25? 5 does. It's as simple as that. Look at the next one, look at letter b. I'm still subtracting perfect squares. It's okay that the y squared is second. It's not really a big deal. It's still in the form of a perfect square minus a perfect square. And when you do that, take the a term. What's the square root of 64? It's 8. The square root of y squared is y. And I know that the pattern was when I'm subtracting perfect squares, it ends up being a plus minus. All right, letter C, maybe hit pause and try C and D, you can do that. All right, perfect square minus another perfect square. Notice none of these have a B, right? There's no B term in here. It's just an A term and a C term. All right, the square root of 9N squared, well, the square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of N squared is N, so I'm going to have 3N is my A, and the square root of 16 is 4, and I know it's a plus minus because that's what happens. And for letter D, all right, it's missing the B. That's how I know I can use this. I'm going to take the square root of each. The square root of 16H squared. Well, the square root of 16 is 4. And the square root of H squared is H. The square root of 49 is 7. And since I'm subtracting them, it ends up being a plus minus. So basically when you see something like this, when you see I'm, at, I'm subtracting and they're both perfect squares and there's no bx, it can still be factored. You just have to use that special products factoring technique. Okay, we had that other little pattern we looked at before where we said if you are squaring the a plus the b or we have a minus b squared, we saw that the first term was, I'll scooch back over here, the first term was the a squared, the last term was the b squared, and to get the middle term, we took the a times b times 2, right? And that gave us our middle piece. So now we're just kind of going backwards. With this one, you could use a factor sum chart, and it would work out for you. So again, if you can't remember all the, the patterns for it, these patterns are meant for this to make it go faster for you. With letters A through D, you kind of have to know, you have to know that one because the factor sum chart doesn't work when you don't have a B. This one, you do have a B, so you could make it happen. But I'm all about shortcuts, right? Okay, so I have X squared plus 6X plus 9. First, I want to see, is this a candidate for this? Does it fit into this mold? And how you can recognize it? Look at your first and last terms and see if they're, if they're perfect squares, like this square. There's, that means the square root of them is a whole number. We talked about that in class quite a bit. So the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 9 is 3, right? So I'm thinking it's okay, but I want to make sure with this middle term that it's right. So we're going to kind of undo what's been going on here to figure out if this 6 is okay, if I can actually use a strategy I'm going to use. So before, we had to multiply by 2, right? So if you take this 6x and you divide it by 2, you'd get 3, correct? Is 3 squared 9? 
Yes. So if when you divide this by two and square it, you get that resulting digit, then I know we can use the method we're going to use. That's how you can tell. So I'll show you one more example of this. I know that n's a perfect square, 16's a perfect square. To make sure I can use the pattern I'm going to show you, I'm going to take 8 divided by 2 and square it and make sure I get 16. 8 divided by 2 is 4, 4 squared is 16, so I know I can use it. And what is the pattern you say? E and F are both addition, and we see that all you have to do when it fits this pattern is take the square root of A plus the square root of B, which is that, squared. Done. I know, I told you this was going to be a lot shorter than the other. That means with this one, it's plus plus. This works, I know, because when I take this middle term and divide it by 2 and square it, I get that. All you have to do is take the square root of the first plus the square root of the last and square it. And that one's done. And if you would have done the factor sum chart, the factor, you would have ended up fine. Okay. Look at letter G. This is a minus plus. We have a pattern for that. It's the same exact thing, right? Except now I'm going to take a minus b squared. Or it'll end up being a plus negative b. We can still do keep change change and that's fine. Now x squared is a perfect square and so is 81. To make sure this works, I'd have to divide it by 2 and square it. Negative 18 divided by 2 is negative 9. Isn't the quantity of negative 9 squared but positive 81? Yes, so I can use this. All I have to do now, because it was a minus plus, I'm going to take the square root of the first term minus the square root of the last term and square it. And we're done. And you remember that if you have a minus plus, it's always minus minus. And this means x minus 9 times the quantity of another x minus 9. Last one. I see the first term is a perfect square, so is the last term. If you take negative 10 divided by 2 squared, you get the quantity of negative 5 squared, which is 25, so I know it works. Square root of d squared is d. Square root of 25 is 5. And because this was a minus plus, or because that b is negative, that means this is going to be subtraction squared. All done. I'll see you tomorrow.